or something to that effect. So David was the first compiler. It looked like there were three different people who compiled the book of Psalms, David being the first. And then we got into talking about the divisions of the book of Psalms itself. Do you remember how many divisions there are in the book of Psalms? Well, what do the divisions of the book line up with? Yes, it is five. And in your Bible, we found out last week, it just simply says book one, book two for the most part, book three, book four, book five. Other Bibles might have a little bit more detail, but what do these five books of the book, or five divisions of the book of Psalms line up with? The Pentateuch. And what is the Pentateuch? David wrote that psalm 
or rather somebody came kind and said, I'm going to write a song or a song and attribute it to David, write it in his memory. And the reason I say that is, I uh, was going back and reading what I wrote, there's debate on whether or not the individual mentioned in the heading, like a song of David, is actually the author because it can be translated several different ways. It can be translated as belonging to that person, is related to that person, is connected to that person, or simply is dedicated to that person. Regardless, what we do know is, as I've already said, that heading was added at a later date to try to give us better insight into that psalm itself. Now, if you want to turn to the book of Psalms, we're going to be reading some headings ourselves. There were multiple authors when it comes to the book of Psalms. It appears that Moses wrote a psalm in Psalm 90. And I will turn to that one. If someone wants to get Psalm 72 and also Psalm 127. But Psalm 90. The Bible states, third prayer song, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So it appears that Moses wrote one of the Psalms, one of the Psalms in the book of Psalms. What about Psalm 72, 1 and 27? Or even if you have just one of those. Do you have a heading at the top? Because you should. Okay, it just says a song for Solomon. Exactly. A song of Solomon. So it appears that Solomon wrote two songs throughout the book. So two songs in the book of Psalms are attributed to Solomon writing. I did not put down one for this one. I missed it, but Asaph wrote several, at least one song. Now, who was Asaph? Well, if we read First Chronicles chapter six and thirty-nine, if someone would please find that. First Chronicles six thirty-nine, and I'll find Second Chronicles twenty-nine. get insight into who Asaph was. Does someone have 1 Chronicles 6 39? His brother Asaph was known as right hand even Asaph the sons of Eric, the son of Shimeon. And then in 2 Chronicles 29 and verse 30 the Bible states Moreover, Hezekiah, the king and the princes, commanded the Levites to sing praises unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph, the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. So Asaph was a seer. We also find in Psalm chapter 50, 73 through 83, but in Psalm chapter 50, we find that David's Levitical choir director apparently wrote a song. In Psalm chapter 50, and that's referring to Asaph, 73. also find a psalm to Asaph. Then in Psalm chapter 42 through 49, 
if someone wants to go ahead and read the one at the top of 49. But Psalm 42 through 49, 85, 87, we have another group of people. So we have the sons of Korah writing a book, at least several of the Psalms, Psalms in the book of Psalms. And it's interesting at all when it comes to the sons of Korah, because when you find out who the sons of Korah were and what exactly they did, and you read their Psalms, especially one of them that we'll talk about at a later date, you find that they are in relation to Moses, Korah being a cousin of Moses, if I remember correctly, who led the revolt against Moses where the earth swallowed him up. And they were also the ones that carried the pieces of the tabernacle. But yet they want to be hired. But yet we still have them writing some of the songs in the book of Psalms. We have Heman the Ezraite in 89 and Ethan the Ezraite, who both wrote Psalm 89 are mentioned there. Now, if someone would please find 1 Kings 4.31, 1 Kings 4.31, and I'll find 1 Chronicles 
or it could be music as well on the instrument. We know he was a musician according to 1 Samuel 16, 18. Oh, he did. He did. All I'm saying is that there's two sides to music. There's the poet side and there's the musical side. And David was a poet, but he was also a musician. So when you combine the two, it's not surprising that he wrote several songs. Second Samuel, oh, first Samuel 16, 18. And I'm in the wrong Samuel. Does somebody have first Samuel 16, 18? You want to go ahead and read that long, please? Nope, I thought it was there. Then he answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain. And his mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. So he was known as a psalmist throughout Israel. Uh, he was a musician. Second thing, last thing I'm going to talk about is he was known as the psalmist of Israel in 2 Samuel 23, 1 and 2. Now these be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, referring to David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. So he was known as the psalmist of Israel. If we were to look at the book of Psalms, and who wrote the majority of them, it's clear to say that more than likely it would be David, without a shadow of a doubt. Out of 150 psalms, or psalms, whatever you want to call it, David wrote 73, or at least 73, are attributed, ascribed to having David written them. In fact, we talk about those headings, book one, book two. David wrote the, major the majority of the Psalms in both 1 and 2, books 1 and 2 of the book of Psalms, or we could say the two divisions of Psalms, the first division, second division. In fact, most attribute all the way from Psalms 1 through 72 to be a written by David alone. Now how do we know without a shadow of a doubt that somebody said something way back when? Or even somebody said something at all? If you go into scholarly research, what might they say? Well, here's some information. Well, where did you get this? Well, so-and-so said this, or so-and-so said that. Or if you go to a magazine or somewhere, they're going to have a quote from the president or something like that. So we know that according to this magazine, President Trump said this. Well, when we get to the New Testament, we actually have authors quoting David himself and quoting from the Psalms. If we go back and forth, if someone would please find Acts 4.25, Acts 4.25, we find that Luke actually quoted David. If someone would please read Acts 4, 25. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? So he said it came from whose mouth? David. David. And he said, why did the heathen rage? What was that? Read it one last time, Mom, and I'll read Psalm 2. One. Who by the mouth of the servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So we have Luke attributing a book of Psalm, a chapter of Psalms, to David himself, and he's quoting him verbatim. 
we can flip back to Psalm chapter 2, 1 and say, yep, that's exactly where Luke is quoting from. We know that Paul quoted um, some of the Psalms of David. What about uh, Romans chapter 4, 6 and 7? Romans 4, 6 and 7. If you have it, go ahead and read it. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man under whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Psalm 32 and verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And verse 2. Blessed is the man under whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God. So Paul quoted and said, this is what David said, and then he quoted it. We can go back to Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2, and say, yep, Paul verified, David said that. Matthew quoted from the psalmist David. What about Matthew 22, 43, and 44? Saith unto them, How then doth David a spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And Psalm 110 and verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And then finally, we're going to go to the author of Hebrews, Hebrews 4 7. Hebrews 4 7. Again, he limited the certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if we if he will hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. In Psalm 95 and verse 7. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture. And that is not the right, is that? Yep. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his right hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. So we have quotes from four different New Testament authors. At least three if you attribute, attribute Hebrews being written by the Apostle Paul. But these people all said, the psalmist David wrote this. And then we can all go back and verify that. Yet, yeah, this is what David said. So David wrote the majority of the psalms. There are people in the New Testament that support the fact that David wrote some of the Psalms. There is clear because they clearly quoted them. They said this is what David said, and they quoted it. Then when we get down to it, or wrap up, what is the purpose of the book of Psalms to begin with? Do you remember? I've said it several times this week and last. Well, let me go back to this. Who started compiling the book of Psalms? David. And why was he trying to compile the book? The reason that he was trying to compile the book is, remember that group of people singing songs before the Ark of the Covenant? That choir that he... Uh, compiled together, they needed a songbook because they didn't want to sing this. I shouldn't say they didn't want to, but there's nothing like singing the same song over and over and over for years and years and years, and that's the only song you know. So David was compiling a songbook. It would be like us coming to church and singing the same song the entire worship service, week in, week out, service after service after service. Can the Holy Ghost move with that? Absolutely. But yet, that one song would not be enough to express our feelings or emotions towards God. To lift up our voices in praise for what He's done for us. If we go back and actually study it out, David compiled a Levitical choir. I don't have the verses in here. I think they are mentioned throughout the notes. Uh, but that Levitical choir that he arranged to 
worship God around the Ark of the Covenant was meant to be a permanent establishment. What does Psalm chapter 72 and 20 state? And I'll turn there. I'm not sure why, but that passage is there to begin with at the same time. But if we study it out, David meant for the Levitical choir to be permanent. He really did. In fact, we find later on that Hezekiah brought back or made reference to the Levit Levitical choir around in the temple itself. And he made mention to the fact that David was the one that arranged it. So when we look at the book of Psalms, it is connected directly to temple connect, uh, activity to begin with. The book of Psalms itself. And the reason for that is, it's the psalm book that David began compiling for the choir to sing and worship God as a minister before the Ark of the Covenant. In the or even minister in the temple period. So at this point, we're going to stop. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add at this point? I know we're just going over introductory material. We'll start talking about songs a little bit more in depth at a later date. But we need to get a basis on why is the book of Psalms, why was it written in the first place? What was the purpose? Who compiled it? Realize that David's not the only author, as much as people get up and say, David wrote the book of Psalms. David did not write the book of Psalms. He, started, he wrote several of the Psalms, and he might have started compiling uh, the first portion of this book of Psalms. But he's not the main author. Well, I know that David wrote the Ten Yes, sir. And Solomon wrote two. That's what it looks like. Moses only wrote one. That's what it looks like. Now, we got to keep in mind if we're going to always, if we're going to get this is fact, this is fact, this is fact, we also have to keep in mind the other aspect of it. There are quite a few anonymous songs. That's what it's Yes, sir. But coming back to that, like I said, there are songs without authors attached to them. So maybe Moses wrote more than one song. Maybe David wrote more than one song, uh, more than 73. Maybe the sons of Korah wrote more than, I guess, I think it's two. You know, we don't know who wrote those songs. They're anonymous. But what can we say with a definite is this is how many they wrote for sure. Anybody else want to add anything? I love songs for encouragement. Well, we do. And they are very encouraging because the book of Psalms is one of the few books where it's not, it's almost, let me back up. When you look at the Bible, the Bible is God's word to man. It's the Holy Ghost pending down the words to us. Now, don't take me wrong and say that the Holy Ghost did not write the book of Psalms, and that's the way it is, because that's not true. The Holy Ghost wrote the book of Psalms that are inspired, but, and we know that because prophecies contain the Psalms and so forth. But the book of Psalms changes direction where it's man's perspective writing to God. God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. It's not God coming down and saying, oh, this is uh, salvation, this is holiness. Uh, the judge shall live by faith. He's not giving instruction that way, but rather the book of Psalms is more or less man writing to God. His feelings. His emotions. Thou knewest me in the day when I was created. You knew me before my members were even born. You knew me while I was still in my mother's belly. You know, the book of Psalms changes uh, is the perspective from the rest of the Bible itself. Because the rest of the Bible is God writing to man through the Holy Ghost. But the Holy but the book of Psalms is man writing through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to God. God, this is how I feel. This is what I'm going through. This is what I need. You know, these are the difficult times when I go through. Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, God, I know you're there with me. And versus God saying, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be there. But rather, Psalms is our perspective writing to God. Man 
to God. And because of that, it gets a lot more of a personal feel for us because these are things that we go through on a daily basis. These are, and even if it's not a daily basis, it's what we're going through in life. And that's why we can look through the book of Psalms and find encouragement. We can look through the book of Psalms, even though it's written hundreds, even thousands of years ago, we can still say, this relates to me. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. This is how my heart feels. This is how I'm broken. Emotionally, this is just the place I'm at. And it's the same reason every time that preachers go back to Psalm 23, even for a funeral or a death, because it's something that everyone can relate to. Yes, God is there to guide me in the good times. And when the trouble waters are troubled, he's the one that calms them down for me. And even when I'm going in the midst of my enemy, it seems like I can't catch a, catch a break. He's the one that prepares the table and gives me sustenance and nourishment and gives me the ability to push through. And even when I'm going through that dark, scary place, the valley of death has almost been attributed, if I'm not mistaken, to a small, narrow passageway in a high up mountain. Or maybe there's a little gap between rocks that if you go through it, you would fall. But it's not far enough to jump over. And it's a shepherd going before us saying, it's okay. It's that reason that we can connect to it every single time. Because it is a change of perspective. It is us writing to God about our feelings and what we're going through. And because of that, we might relate to it a little bit better. Plus, um, what is a song? What is a song? What is the purpose of a song? It is written out of emotion. It stirs emotion. Songs written, songs written in the 1800s by Ira D. Sankey, Fanny Crosby, Visions of Rapture, now burst from my sight. They relate to us, even though they were written maybe 100 years ago or so. Why? Because it is written out of emotion. And because of that, it stirs our emotion. And we are touched by it. Anybody else want to add anything? If not, we'll bow our heads and we'll prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us in chapter 10, Jim. Lord, we thank you that your God reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. We rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels to the four corners of the property above and below. And no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth. That the Holy Ghost may move as it so desires, make him so faithful if he so chooses. I so anoint the song leader and the musicians, Lord, as they lead us in the songs you have us to sing, as they lead us, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. I anoint the pastor's mind and his lips as they bring forth your word today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you anoint our hearts and our minds to receive the message which you have for us, Lord, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we may apply it to our lives, be even further transformed into your very image. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.